A parent of one of the 27 students of Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, Afaka, Kaduna State, who were recently released by bandits, has revealed that some of the students were allegedly molested sexually by gay bandits while in captivity. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, there are indications that the Southern Governors Forum has directed state houses of assembly in the South to enact law backing the ban on open grazing. Recall that governors of the Southern Region met in Asaba Delta State on Tuesday, during which they resolved to ban open grazing. Ifai Okowa, the chairman of South South Governors Forum and governor of Delta State, said that every state would enact its law to enforce the ban. At number 9, a Second Republic senator and a renowned historian, Banji Akintoye, has alerted governors in the southwest of a plot by terrorists to attack the region. In a letter written to the governors, Akintoye said the entire region has already been surrounded by the terrorists. This was contained in a statement issued yesterday by his media aide, Maxwell Adeleye. He therefore urged the government to begin to make moves to thwart the planned attacks by the criminals, adding that the hoodlums had perfected plans to attack important places in order to wreck the economy of the region. Akintoye particularly advised the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, Bishop Oyedepo of Winners Chapel and other church and Islamic leaders to protect their churches and mosques from being attacked. At number 8, about 115 inmates in the Enugu State Correctional Center recorded credit passes in English language and mathematics in the last National Examination Council. The Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Correctional Service in Enugu State, Monde Chukwemeka, disclosed this in a statement yesterday. NECO released the results of its 2020 SSC on Friday, May 7th. Chukwemeka said that inmates in Enugu who were tutored within the custodial center had been excelling in SSC. At number 7, the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodima, has fired 20 commissioners. It was gathered that the affected commissioners were in their offices when the news broke on Wednesday afternoon. Recall that two weeks ago, the governor had alleged that some of his appointees were sabotaging his administration. The governor, however, retained eight commissioners. The retained commissioners are the commissioners of Works, Information, Health, Finance, Women Affairs and Tourism, Youth and Sports and Technology. This development came barely a month after the governor reshuffled his cabinet and appointed new commissioners for finance and health. At number six, two containers filled with 80,882 pirated textbooks and dictionaries worth 80 million naira has been seized and in the custody of the Nigeria Customs Service. The Nigerian Copyright Commission Deputy Comptroller of Enforcement, Tinkan Port, BN Obiakulusi, while speaking during the inspection of the books at the Lagos Zonal Office, emphasized the commitment of the NCS in the fight against contraband goods, particularly pirated books brought into the country through the ports. It was reported that both containers had 80 million naira worth of books, including books from Learn Africa PLC, Lantern Books, Africana First Publishers PLC, Tonad Publishers Limited, and Oxford University Press. At number five, a three-day national prayer has been declared by the Christian Association of Nigeria over the worsening insecurity in the country. The association, in a letter signed by Daramola Joseph, Khan's National General Secretary, titled National Days of Soberness, Mourning and Fervent Prayers for God's Mercy by Christians in Nigeria from Friday, May 28th to Sunday, May 30th, 2020, said it has become important for citizens to pray for God's intervention. So consequently, all local churches are expected to gather in the evening of each day set aside for the prayers to pray to God in the attitude of mourning or soberness for the bloodshed of many innocent Nigerians, most especially Christians. At number four, in order to prevent a third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Lagos State has placed the United States of America, South Africa, Canada, Kenya, Tanzania, Ghana, Togo, France, Germany, Uganda, the Netherlands, Cameroon, Angola, and Rwanda on its watch list. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Akin Abayomi, revealed this yesterday at a briefing on the state's COVID-19 update and preparation against the third wave. Besides India, Brazil and Turkey that already have the attention of the federal government, Lagos State said it would closely monitor passengers from the 13 countries listed above. At number 3, the general manager of the National Theatre, Sunday Ododo, has said that the 44-year-old complex will create more than 16,000 jobs during and after its renovation. He said most of the jobs would come from entertainment, fashion and information technology. Recall that the federal government and the Central Bank of Nigeria recently signed a memorandum of understanding for renovation of the complex, 
Under the MOU, the CBN will invest 21.894 billion naira to renovate the complex, refurbish and run its operations. At number two, a former Chief of Defense Staff, Joshua Dongoyaru, has died at the age of 80. The first son of Dongoyaru, Joseph, who disclosed this on Thursday, said his father had been sick until this morning when he passed away at about 3 a.m. Joseph added that the corpse of the ex-Chief of Defense Staff had been deposited at the Joss University Teaching Hospital Mortuary and that the family would discuss funeral arrangements soon. Finally, at number one, a parent of one of the 27 students of Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, Afaka Kaduna State, who were recently released by bandits, has revealed that some of the students were allegedly molested sexually by gay bandits while in captivity. Some of the male victims were said to be homosexually molested and disfigured by the bandits. A parent who revealed this to news sources said it would take donkey years before the students recover from the inhuman treatment and abuse they experienced in the hands of the bandits. The woman who did not reveal the identity of her child confirmed that even the male students were sexually molested and that none of them was left out. She said, you know what, from what they said, you cannot say no to them. On a daily basis, they were having sex with the male and female students of their choice, even with severe injuries being sustained. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.